Hello, this is Melena Ray Johnson with F4 Nerdy Girls with Melena Ray Johnson. That's me. And today's topic is I never lose, I win, or I learn. A quote from Lewis Tan. So today we're talking about failure. How do you keep on swimming like Dory and Nemo after a setback? Well, one, feel your feelings. Two, look at your options. And three, take action. So first, who am I? I'm still Melena Ray Johnson and still working on my intro, but I went to Loyola Marymount for film school and the University of Southern California for business school where I studied marketing, entertainment, and entrepreneurship. So I am immensely qualified to help you with connections and communication. Also, I'm working on my fourth book, Love in a Luau, which is about a refugee suffering from PTSD who is scared to fall in love with a single dad. And I've done hundreds of coffee chats and informational interviews. So if you are wondering how to connect with people and build your network, ask me questions, leave comments, and email me at fornerdygirls at gmail.com. So let's talk about today, our topic is failure. So recently I have experienced some failures and not gone things that I wanted, even though I've worked on them for years. So for instance, I worked at, I had this idea in my, in middle school that I wanted to become a filmmaker and have a production company and also be married to Elijah Wood. And none of those things happen, but I am somehow in 2018, I realized that I actually do have a media production company because I make these videos every day and I've made other videos too that you can watch. You can click on the, the website link for nerdygirls.com and you can see some of my videos that I've made in the past, starting with 2010. And I have this idea that I wanted to uh, then be in entertainment marketing. So after I got my MBA, that's what I wanted to do. And that didn't actually happen in a traditional sense. It happened in a non-traditional sense in that now after having done so much in social media and produced my own entertainment and produced my own educational videos, I now talk to other people about how they can build their own brand and market themselves online effectively, knowing that each platform is different and that you should concentrate on one or two platforms at a time so as to not overwhelm yourself. There's only one you, unless you have help, so then you can delegate. Okay, so how do you keep on swimming even though you've suffered a setback? So. I've suffered many setbacks, and, and it, the, one of the weirdest things about these setbacks <laughs> is that, it, that I, I had a, a, uh, a, what was it called? a call with my two business coaches, Danny and Trish, last night. It was the, com the, the completion of the program, and Danny said, you always seem so cheerful and happy, even if you're uh, frustrated by your your uh, your." business and things don't necessarily go the right way, you seem pretty happy about it and then figure out something else to do and then go implement that. And that's rare. And I was like, uh, don't people just, you know, figure out what to do next? <laughs> and apparently, no, not everyone just says, oh, that's terrible. Let's figure out what to do next. But that's what I do because that's what I'd like to do. In 2018, I think in 2000, at the end of 2017, the beginning of this year, I decided that that at 36, I wanted to be at the place where Wanda Sykes said that people get to when they're 40, when they stop caring about what other people think and just do what they're gonna do anyway. And I really wanna figure out what I want to do with my life. And um, I knew that I wanted to figure that out before, but it's, uh, it's not so much that I need to figure out what I'm gonna do. It's more like, okay, how about this? Let's try that. Or how about this? Let's try that. Regardless of, well, how will this affect my career prospects? Or how will this affect uh, where I live? It's not so much of that anymore. I did a lot of um, following all the rules by going to, to film school and then going to business school and following all the rules that were set out for me in both of those institutions and throughout entertainment. And I didn't achieve the success that I wanted to. And people often say, things happen for a reason. They often say that when people have failed. They don't say that when pe things go the right way that was expected. They don't say, oh, you, uh, you, you want a, a Olympic gold medal. Well, things happen for a reason. Like, why, why don't you say that then? Why, well, why don't you say that when, when things are going great for people? So 
I want to tell you how you can get through failure and keep on swimming after a setback. So I said there, there were celebrities that are going to be mentioned. So first was Lewis Tan, and he also had this, this, uh, oh, this quote that I keep sharing with people because it's how I continue to uh, live my February and March now. So I'll read the quote for you, and then I'll link to it in the comments as well. So it was on one of his Instagram pages. And also, it is March 7th, 2018. So as of now, he has not been accused of anything. So let's keep it that way. All right. He said, if you push through the pain and sacrifice it takes to live your life at the very edge of your capabilities instead of what is comfortable, you will see your dreams manifested. It is hard. It is scary. And I have lots of dreams, and I want to see them manifested. So for me... I don't want to live in places of regret and not trying things. I'd rather try things and fail at them than not try them at all and get nowhere. I like living my life not with complacency and um, and settling and um, complaining without actually doing anything about the things I'm complaining about. I actually like to do things. Clearly, I like to do a lot of things. And let's, okay, so I got my book here, Go For No. It's a book that Danny, my business coach, suggested. It is, yes is the destination, no is how you get there. So essentially, as my, uh, my business friend Nicole Amos said, if you're not getting a no enough, if you're not getting any no's, you're not asking big enough. So I want to continue asking big, and if I get no's, that means that, I am actually asking for the things that I want. If I'm not getting any response, <laughs> then, then I'm not asking anything at all. So first, let's talk about Oprah Winfrey and talking about feeling your feelings. So I'm going to do one, two, and three. So Oprah, you all know Oprah. She has a legendary story of how she, when, the, when she started her Oprah Winfrey show, the people, the company that she was with didn't want to fund it, so she had to own the show herself and fund it herself, which means that now, I guess at the time the show ended, she owned the whole show. So she reaped the benefits of that. She didn't have to worry about residuals because it was her company. She didn't have to worry about tracking down her money in the same way that other people do because it's her show. So Initially, people were like, why would it, why are we going to put this weird-looking black lady on TV? And she's like, well, I have a skill. Let's do it. And she did it. And I don't think it was the first time that she, that she thought, I want to have my own TV show. And I don't think it's the first thing she did. She had a whole career. So she felt her feelings, most likely. She has a lot of feelings to share, especially on Super Soul Sunday. And she said, I'm going to do this anyway, and I'm going to keep going, and I'm going to keep going. And she had lots of setbacks, like the the time that the beef industry said that they were going to sue her for, for talking about beef, which was like, why? That doesn't even make any sense. And there are people who thought that her network wouldn't work because it didn't turn a profit in the first year, as if they had any complaints about other networks that hadn't turned profits for, for years. Uh, she kept going, and I'm sure that she felt a lot of feelings about all those things, but she kept going. All right, two. Jordan Peele, he just won an Oscar for Best Screenplay. He, he didn't win a Best Oscar for Best Actor, Daniel Kluwa. He didn't win for Best Director. He didn't win for Best Movie. But his company, the company behind his movie, put him up for all of those awards anyway. And he got three no's, but he got one yes. And he had to, he also talked in a speech about how he stopped writing this script 20 times and because he thought no one was going to let him make the script. And he, on the 21st time, he kept going and he, he, he did it. So he didn't just say, no, I'm not going to do this. <laughs> he kept coming back to it. It took 21 times for him to look at what he was doing and say, yes, this is more important than anything else. This is more important than the rejection that I know I'm going to face by putting this script out there. So he looked at his options and he did something amazing with this movie. He turned for a $4 million movie into $200 million worldwide, which is, it, uh, it's a big percentage. It's a lot. 
So I want you, when you have failure, look at your options and see, is it worth it to quit? Or is there something bigger that can happen after you continue moving forward? And then three, take action. So Sonia Sotomayor is the third celebrity and historical person that I will mention. She is someone who I know experienced a lot of failure and a lot of people just throwing stuff at her her whole life, possibly actual stuff, but also figuratively. She is now an associate justice on the Supreme Court of the United States, but she had to go through Princeton and to Yale as probably one of the few women and the few Latinxes and the few Latinx women at either of those schools. And somehow she made it to the Supreme Court of the United States because someone believed in her. Many people believed in her, but she didn't just sit back and say, well, I hope this works out. <laughs> she took action and she went to each of those schools. She continued being an amazing justice. And even during her confirmation, uh, her confirmation hearings when these awful white men were suggesting that she wasn't qualified because she was a Latina woman or they're just being completely rude to her. She didn't say, well, I guess that should just stop. <laughs> she took action. She knew that even though this was not the reception that she should be getting as a qualified person in this situation, she kept going and now she's, she, she got sworn in and she had her mother hold the book and now she's on the Supreme Court. So I want you to think about ways that you have failed in the past or ways that you may be thinking about, oh, I'm going to fail at this or I have failed at this. This is terrible. I want you to look at those and say, one, you're going to feel your feelings. Two, after you felt your feelings, you're going to look at your options. And then three, you're going to take action. And feel your feelings. Three, take action. How does this all relate to building your network? Well, I know that many of you have experienced lots of awkwardness and weirdness and, and anxiety around reaching out to other people and building your network. It's okay to feel those feelings because uh, sometimes people are weird and it doesn't always work out. I want you to, to look at your options. Look at the ways that you can connect with people today, this week, this month, and figure out what works for you. Sometimes going up to people in person at networking events works for some people. Sometimes talking to people in Facebook groups works. Sometimes talking with your Instagram friends might work for connections. Look at the ways that work best for you. And then three, take action. Do something to build your network. Because if you're not building your network, you're losing out on opportunities. You're losing out on ways to connect with people who can be partners or clients or platforms for you to share your message with the world. So I want you to feel your feelings about networking. I want you to look at your options for networking and then three, take action. So if you would like to talk more with me, about how I can help you with your networking goals and your communication and how you can make friends as an adult, please email me at fornerdygirls at gmail.com. And you can also leave a comment if you're on Facebook in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.